Welcome to Cocktail Hour. I'm Andy. And I'm the Rev. Welcome to episode 27. Is this 27? It's 27. We're not on 20. Is it? Are Is you it? sure? Did I, you look it up? No, I didn't look it up this time. I don't think this is twenty. I think this is is this twenty eight? No, this is twenty seven because I got to do math last time. Oh, I remember now. My you're right. God, you're trying to kill me. I am. Did you slow, I, painful death? <laughs> How many cocktails have you had anyway? I'm just starting on this one. What? I'm really hot. It's freaking eighty something degrees in this room. I'm so hot. Oh, well, drink not in a good way. Drink up, sister. You won't I feel am, the I heat. Know. And speaking, right. speaking of drinks, we're having the Ruby Relaxer. And uh, actually, it's not bad. It, it's a little bit reminiscent of Jennifer. You got that little smegma smell. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> 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 no sniffing fingers. Okay. But it's got uh, a lot of the same ingredients. It does, except for the cranberry. And this, um... No, no, no. Sex has cranberry. The peach schnapps is different. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, I like Jennifer better. I thought I thought that Ruby might have a chance, but I do like Jennifer better. I, I think the peach is uh, is uh, throwing me off a little. Well, here's here's what the what's in it: uh, one shot of peach schnapps, one shot of vodka, one shot of coconut rum. Uh, you mix all that together. You put it in a glass filled with ice. You almost fill the entire glass with pineapple juice, and then you add a little splash of cranberry juice and served up. You know the um, the link that you that you or where you got this from? Mm-hmm. Did you watch the little video that went with it? No, I didn't. Did you? I did. They used it in a um, with no ice, and then they poured it into. I mean, they they stirred it with ice, and then they put it into a martini glass. Oh, nice. Yeah, but I wasn't going to do that because that's not enough. I need more. Yeah, I put mine in a highball glass, which I took a picture of. Yay! And put I it, did too. Yay! And put it on Facebook. I did not. Oh. <laughs> it will eventually. It'll get there. <laughs> it will. You know what will happen a couple months ago? Did you take a picture of that? <laughs> I'm like, yes, damn it. <laughs> no, it's on my phone. I never delete shit off my phone. Oh, God, me neither, and I should. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, well, I ha- the drink is refreshing. It's good. I could get a buzz out of this, but I'm only going to have one because after uh, we do our show, i got to get back to uh, playing my Xbox game, Rage, which came out this Tuesday. I've been killing shit left and right. It's fabulous. I think the only thing this game is going to be missing is, you know, have sex with a character. Hmm. Does, do most games have sex with a character? No, but that's like a newer trend, and I'm really happy about it. Really, I know that uh, one of one of the games that uh, my wife plays on on the PSP, uh, the the latest God of War, I think it was. It was God of War three. If you do a certain uh, combination of of buttons, um, the the main character has sex with a few women. Yeah, like, but I the think pro- it's like a little mini orgy. It is, but the problem with it is, is when they get get ready to get busy and down to business. The camera pans to the, the little side table on the bed. You can hear rattling and moaning and sighing and stuff, but you don't see nothing. Oh, and I know how much you hate that fade to, bla- fade to black. It's show, like a so. fade to black, yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, if you want to have a great game, great graphics, great interaction, and a game you can play for fucking hours, no lie, get Mass Effect. It's actually a trilogy. Part 1 and 2 are out now. Part 3 comes out next year, and they're based on books, which I only found out recently. But that cool game, you can play as a female lead, uh, and you can wine and dine any of uh, the crew members, women and men, don't matter. But ultimately, you pick one, and whatever one that what, what that one is, you know, you woo her to or him, who you know, it's always a her for me. <laughs> but you woo her, and you actually have sex just before you go into the final battle of the story. And, like, they're showing some stuff, man. I'm like, whoa! I about fell over when I first saw it. Is that available on PS3 or just Xbox? I think it's available on all the systems. Well, maybe not Wii, but I think it PS3 and uh, Xbox, yeah. It'd be kind of interesting to see what kind of (coughs) movements you'd have to do with with the Wii. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right? (laughs) Well, what happens is once once you get busy, you know, when you get down the dirty... Mm. um, it goes to a cinematic, so you see cinematic stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's really awesome. 
All right, well, and I'll look into that. It's yeah. old enough. I should be able to get it. Uh, you should be able to get it for under 20 bucks. Excellent. That's my kind of game. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that Dragon Age 2, which I didn't know you could actually have female-to-female sex in that game, but thank you, Roman Slayer <laughs> <laughs> and Colette, for letting me know that I need to get busy with the pirate. <laughs> Dragon Age. See, now that might be more my style. Yeah. So you can Dragon have, Age. Yeah, too. you can have sex with a pirate. She's a Arr. hot pirate chick. Holy shit, man. All right. Well, excellent. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for the, the, you know, this has been Video Game Weekly with Andy. <laughs> and Rev. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, Rage is awesome. I'm on the second disc already. It is butt kicking. Oh, I'm writing down the who would you date because I forgot about that again. Who would oh, you date? You're so silly. So you got you got nothing? That's all you got? Just it's a hot room, you're having a so so drink and thinking about buying games so you can have sex with characters? Maybe. I I don't know. You know what I can't stop thinking about is um our, our guest, who I'm just going to say, because, and here's the thing, I was thinking about this when I was listening to the Redmond show, mm. how you tried to drag it out and be suspenseful, but it says who it is in the in the title of the show. Oh, I know, but it's just us. We have fun with it, so. All right, well, I want to say that um, Q had, when we put the, and this is this was on Google+, Plus. if you're not on Google+, Plus, get, get, get with the program here, folks. Um, but when uh, when you put the name of the drink up for us on on Google Plus, I love Q's response that it sounded like a vibrator. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think she's spot on with that one. I, yeah. I, I think that there could be um, some some copyright stuff going on. I think she should, uh, you know, go into development with that. I'm thinking. And speaking of Q Kelly, uh, this is a really good segue. Thank you, Rev, uh, well, for us to you know, little praise, little introduction. Um, Q Kelly, she is an author. She has joined us this evening. Uh, she has three books out. And I love the fact that I found this little teeny, 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 tiny, tiny, tiny little bio. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. Little tiny, tiny, tiny little sweat ball. No. So, yeah. Have, have you, I'm sorry, have you watched uh, The Best of Gilda Radner lately or something? Yeah, it was a couple months ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, proceed. Okay. So here's what Kelly says. Fact one. I like corny jokes. If you have any good ones, send them my way. Fact two. My favorite color is purple, but my writing is gray. Life is not black and white. Here, here, sister. Fact three. I'm weird. I like being weird. Yeah, me too. So email her at yllek underscore q at yahoo.com. She'd love to hear from you. And check out her blogs at qkelly.wordpress.com and qkelly.blogspot.com. And it is our sincere pleasure to introduce to you Q. Kelly. Welcome. Yay, thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. I've been waiting for you to stop talking. <laughs> hey, the beginning of the show belongs to us. Sorry, no <laughs> guest gets to cut in there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I was teasing. No. Well, she's got interesting. Uh, when I was looking up the information, um, there are three books. Awesome, but I only read one, so you know I got to get the other two now. I'm just yes. saying. Yep, because we read. Rev and I are. We're going to all be talking about strange bedfellows. But uh, Kelly has uh, a retooling or a second edition of Odd Couple and then her newest book, Waiting. So, yeah, I'm not waiting. I'm going to get up on the bandwagon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, really. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, would you like to give us a a little summary about your book? You want to lead off, give us a little kickstart? And, and you don't you don't have to. We give the authors a choice, and I think we're about half and half. Some some authors let me do it. Uh, some want to do it themselves. It's totally up to you. You told me not to think. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I'll do it. So you better do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, honey, I'm used to doing lots of things by myself. Oh, oh Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. <laughs> so we're hitting the toy store when I come up there in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Is that what you're saying? Hey, I got to get myself a Ruby relaxer. I mean, <laughs> oh, Lord, you're so bad. Okay. So um, I'm actually going to cheat and uh, and read the uh, the blurb. 
You know, you've been so, doing that a lot lately. I am. I'm, you know, I'm suffering from, from tremendous sinus headache. And, uh, and so I'm going to use that as my excuse this time. All right. Um, all right. So what happens when the queen of the ex gay movement decides to come out of the closet? The person who helps Frances Dorn with this enormous task is a call girl Frances hires, a call girl with a secret of her own. Can they learn to trust each other enough to find the love they seek in each other's arms? Frances is grappling with something else, too. Her daughter, Marissa, has been gone 11 years. She was kidnapped on her third birthday. Frances hopes her coming out will also ease the way for Marissa's return. <clears throat> and that, that, that sums it up pretty well. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff going on in the book. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting that you read that one. That was the one that came with the book. Well, I had to change it. I was so tired of people emailing me. Oh, I thought it was going to be a comedy. And it's definitely not a comedy. Oh, hell no. (laughs) So if you go to Amazon now, you'll see a new blurb. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to check that out. And, you know, to be honest with you, and I know that, you know, we had, um, you know, you joined in on the conversation that we had on the Goodreads group. This book we hadn't, we hadn't actually planned on, on having on Cocktail Hour. We did um, a buddy read over on our uh, Goodreads group, and there was a lot of discussion. And, you know, you joined in, and we were really, really happy that you did because there was um, – I, I haven't pulled it up and, and looked at the conversations again, but I, I think the listeners would definitely benefit from going over and looking at that. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, there were several people uh, there who who felt the same way that I did. This was nothing like what I expected it to be. Um, I expected it to be um, kind of a kind of a um, a poke fun at the. The, anti, the ex-gay movement or um, just kind of a, a, a caricature of what we expect those people to be like. But this was nothing like that. It's very serious. Um, and and Frances is not the person that, that I thought that she, would, that she would be. Well, this is a romance, not a comedy. Uh, I mean, it is easy to poke fun at the ex-gays, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Andy, did, did you want anything? Uh, well, uh, as, as usual, listeners, this is going to be spoiler-filled because I won't be able to keep my damn mouth shut. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I first of all, I have to say, overall, I really did enjoy well, the that's, book. Well, that's good because I'm not thinking. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I Overall, I, I enjoyed the book very much. Um, there were I, – I, for some reason, though, Francis just irritated the shit out of me. I don't know if it was just because she just was so withdrawn because she was in hiding, you know, emotionally she was so withdrawn. It would just, I don't know, I had a really hard time relating to her and enjoying her character. Um, but she, I liked how you had her soften up, um, largely because of Elena's influence, which was, I think, really well done. And so by the end, I was like, okay, all right. If there was a sequel of these two, I might read it. I'm just saying. Hint, hint, hint. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't. I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I thought you liked Francis. You told me that you liked Francis. I did not. Andy lies. I did not. I just said I had finished. I was reading it. I finished it. I never said I liked it or not. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Rev. Yeah. I, I don't. I. I I don't know that I that I like. I don't. I don't know. Frances was was tough for me. I. I mean. I. I didn't dislike her, but I had a real hard time connecting with her. Um, but like Andy, I mean, I. I, I grew to uh, to care a bit more about her toward the end. Elena, I connected with a lot more. Um, this, I actually got kind of a punch in the gut. Um, the, when I first read this, um, my 12 year old nephew drowned last year, um, while people were right there next to him. And, uh, it was really, really difficult for me to, to read that and to read about, uh, Elena's guilt. And it was just really tough. I'm kind of choking up now just thinking about it. Um, 
But uh, Elena, I, I identified with a, a, a bit more than I did Francis. I think I think part of me didn't want to like Francis, and that's why it took me a while to uh, to connect with her. You mean like a subconscious thing? Maybe, mm. maybe. Yeah, a lot of people said they didn't want to like Francis, and and I think maybe this is the first book that people have gone into not wanting to like one of the characters. Hmm. So I had a big challenge. Mm. And you, you met it well, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you do a good job of, of getting, getting the reader to, um, to kind of look past who we think that she is. And, and I like the way that, uh, that you don't, you don't, really go in uh, a whole lot of detail about the year at camp, but you give us enough to really help us to understand why she worked so hard to be straight. And, and, you know, and I, the other thing I wanted to say is that I, I liked one of the things that helped me to, to connect a bit with Frances, or at least to like her more, to believe that she is genuine is you know her belief that you don't that that you don't um, belittle somebody because they're gay. You know she had very high standards of how she believed people should be treated, and and you know there was that hate the you know love the sinner hate the sin bullshit. But you you know I she I just like the way that you that you handled Francis. Yeah, there was no reason to go into detail about that camp. Yeah, let people make, you know, their uh, own assumptions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can I interject something here? It it makes me think of uh, how totally monstrous her parents were because um, you you found out later in the story, or at least uh, Frances figures out, that her parents had to have known what happened at that camp to her. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that revelation came to Frances, of course, but if she'd have had that revelation a few years back, I tell you what, I would have cut my family off. But she kind of did. and, and No, she... no, I mean, I wouldn't be having Thanksgiving fucking dinner with them. That's for damn sure. I mean, they would have heard nothing, not one peep from my ass, much less step foot in their house. Kelly, did you want to say something on that? If not, I'm jumping in. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. Oh, she found... Um, she found out that they knew when she came out to her parents. What? Yeah, that, that, that's when she suspected, but but she didn't she didn't know for sure until right then. Dang, you know, I just finished that story. What? Yesterday? No, it was today. She was hoping they didn't know, mm-hmm. but she knew. Yeah, that she pretty much knew that they knew. So I forgot that little tidbit from between yesterday and today. That's so sad. Now there was really no um, there there was no closure with the brother though. Yeah, they left that open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's kind of like letting the reader let the uh, let the reader use their own mind too. Mm-hmm. And there was some discussion on the Goodreads group about that, as far as you know, uh, <coughs> what happened to Daniel. And and that was left that that's left to us too. Yep. Which I thought was nice. Well, there's several reasons I did that with Daniel and the brother. Okay, so those few storylines are going to take like a, a couple years to solve. Mm-hmm. So, eh, just leave it. Let the reader figure out what happened. Like, you know, I know what I think happened, but another reader emailed me and you know, about Daniel and said, I think he killed himself. And really? Not, yeah, that was not my idea. Hmm. Wow, I, that had never even occurred to me yeah, that me he would either. do something like that. Not me either. I had happier hopes for Daniel, like rehab. And, yeah, yeah, right. And and coming back later and, and reconnecting. So I, I made it a happy ending. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. Anyway, it's interesting to see different responses. Like, some people say that they love how it was open-ended. And and other people 
Oh, and some people subtracted stars because of that. Really? That's and, bullshit. So you, yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you can't please everyone. Yeah. Well, that's that's very true. Um, let me see. There was... Andy, you want to go for a minute? Um, okay. Uh, let me think. Well, I, Where did you oh, get... Oh, 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 go ahead. <laughs> Where did you get? <laughs> yeah. Where did the idea for the hourglasses come uh, come from? Is that do you uh, collect hourglasses yourself? Yeah. When I was in middle school, I started watching Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. But I went to conventions and everything, and I met all the stars. Really? <laughs> and my mom, she made me wear a dress. Hey. <laughs> Hated that. <laughs> but anyway, so my mom got me an hourglass necklace and she started buying a bunch of hourglasses for me and it went on from there. So, yeah, I kind of just put that in the story. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Um, one thing that, um, I'm, yeah, I'm taking back over. You don't mind, do you, Andy? Yeah, go ahead. All right then. Um, one thing that um, that came up in the Goodreads group that I really didn't, I, I mean, I guess I, I kind of noticed, but it didn't stand out until I did my second reading uh, this week, was um, there's a lot of naming things. There's a lot of, lot of stuff going on with names, like Feliciana going by Anna, and then, you know, uh, Elena talking about how she used to go by all these different names, and then, of course, Victoria slash Marissa, and Daniel slash Timothy. Um, and, and from what I got from your comments was that was, that was pretty intentional. Can you, can you speak to why you wanted to, uh, why, why the names were, were such a big thing? No, I don't think it was intentional, but after the book came out, I realized that. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, the, the point is, and not everybody is not always 100% themselves. That's true, and there was a lot of different, um, a lot of different, uh, secret lives, I guess. There are a lot of different things going on with that. Now that you mentioned that, that's true. You know, you had Feliciana, who um, I just have to say was was loathsome, and and I I would have punched her right in the face. Uh, <laughs> she was very duplicitous. And then you know you have Kevin, who's also uh, well, he didn't really lead a double life, and and but. Uh, I don't know. I, I have different feelings about him, but not very, not as strong. And then Darren, absolutely uh, a two-sided thing going there. Elena, obviously leading a double life. Francis as well. Um, and then Daniel and, and Marissa too. So yeah, pretty much everybody was, was, uh, had, had more than what was just on the surface going on. There were a lot of, um, yeah, there was a, a lot of a lot of deception mm -hmm. in this. True. Yeah, I think I think that duplicity is uh, true for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily to this extent. No. Uh -huh. Well, of course not. <laughs> but I mean, look at politicians. Mm. I, I'd I prefer not I, to. <laughs> I would say what eighty percent are probably like that. Mm. I, I think it would be higher than that. Yeah, me too. And what does that say about <laughs> us that we just uh, accept it, you know? Yeah, well, I was just trying to be nice with politicians. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do live in the right area for that, so yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, no kidding. What is what is Moody calling McAssington? Their governor? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's got quite a few different names. <laughs> Ah, make ass and oh lordy and how did you I really enjoyed that Francis decided when she got her first hooker that white trash was the way to go that cracked me up what I think I missed that part yeah what? her first her fir I missed that part too what no her first their first hooker had the orangey tan going on and she really didn't want to she didn't look for her though she just she just went sight unseen yeah uh -huh, okay but I would I would have kicked this. As soon as I opened that door and saw that orangey glow in the dark tan, I'd have said, "Oh, honey, uh -uh, here's twenty. Go, go away, go away." Seriously. Uh, Ooh. No, go ahead. 
Just ew. Oh, no. He, he, Francis didn't have that kind of a, a thing. You know, she was she was terrified as it was, you know, so she was just going to go with it. And, and she didn't feel like she deserved that anyway. She didn't feel like she deserved to to uh, to have that that um, that pleasure anyway. Oh, please. I had been terrified that orangey color would have rubbed off on me. But see, you're not Francis. <laughs> That's so true. Although I was steeped in a cult for years. That's true, you were. And I did escape. Ha ah. And I'm very so happy you did. Me too. My, my life has been much happier and better. But, um, the thing with the other prostitute is that she didn't try. Like, mm-hmm. Alana tried. Yeah, I should. Yes. Ilana didn't didn't have that kind of that kind of hang up either with her. You know, she had read the biography and and or the autobiography and and she felt she felt that connection with her so there was more in it. You know, that connection with the missing child and and she seemed to she seemed to be able to immediately look past um Francis's public persona and and look to the woman that was yeah, inside right. and and here's a parallel maybe not the nicest one but a lot of readers at first are like the first prostitute they can't see past mm-hmm. they can't see past you know her for who she really is yeah, and, and I, you're absolutely right because I that's how I was. That's how I wanted to be. I did not want to like Frances. I don't care what she went through, you know. But but I but I had to, I had to take a step back, and and you know, and and the character of Elena really helped us to do that to be able to, to kind of cut back and go, uh, you know what, she's right. You know, she 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 isn't. She isn't the public persona, and but even Elena could see that before before everybody else. So, so she was kind of like our our tour guide um, to to get to know Francis a little bit better, to let our guard down a little bit, I think. But Andy's hard, and it's hard to get her to do that. <laughs> you, did, <laughs> yes. you, you didn't like Francis, did you? Did you, Andy? Um. Well, as I said earlier, I mean, by the time the story was almost to its conclusion, um, you know, she wormed her way in a little bit more. But, yeah, I didn't like her from the very beginning now. I, I thought um, one thing that, that, um, that I wanted to bring up was um, how well you, you uh, showed Francis's vulnerability as far as um, her, her ego, her sexual ego. You know, she was she was very afraid and timid, and and Elena was um, was very perceptive of that, and and went back and forth on several occasions on, you know, do I stick with the rules? Do I stick with what I'm supposed to be at the de- you know to the detriment of of this woman's burgeoning um, confidence, you know, sexual confidence? And she really battled with that. I thought you did a really good job of of showing that to the reader. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I guess uh, Alana is really the kind of person who could make friends with anyone. Um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Andy, we got a, we got an echo on me. Yeah, it went away. All right, then. Um, did you want to say anything else? Because otherwise I'm ready to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy! Oh, Welcome to our show. <laughs> yeah. What else? Um, I could understand her her fear of of having her daughter back in her life again. That made perfect sense to me because that's how I would feel. Be scared to death or try and you know raise a child. Oh my god! Hello. Or be a parent. That scares the shit out of me. Shit scares the shit out of me. <laughs> and you have a kid. I don't have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so go and, ahead. And Frances didn't really have that motherly instinct either. Yeah, me either. She, she didn't really want the kid in the first place. Mm-hmm. And then, bam, she has a kid. Yeah. Uh, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I totally. Un, I mean, that. Yeah, I could relate with to Frances on that on that one. The um, the the thing I wanted to um to talk about, and I think there was some debate 
uh, a little bit of a debate on this over at the Goodreads group was um, Feliciana. Because I know that that there was some defending of her actions and and all of that, but even, even had she... Even had she just stopped before the ultimate betrayal, I still had issues. But, uh, you know, there, there could, for me personally, I don't see any reason other than, 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 than vindictiveness um, for her to, to make that recording, uh, you know, to, to orchestrate that entire thing, the recording and the, and the, um, and the outing of her essentially, uh, to the public. So, uh, well, 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 okay. Here's the thing. So you have, you all say that you had a hard time connecting with Francis and Feliciana didn't know all that stuff that was going on with Francis. So I can, yeah, I can understand definitely why she did the things that she did. I mean, it's kind of like you two saying, Fran, you know, with Frances, why would anyone want to help her? I, I can see that, but, but she's supposed to be in love with Elena. She's supposed to be her best friend. She helped her through the death of her child. And then she does the worst thing possible because she's pissed off because she lost essentially. I mean, at least that's how I saw it. You know, Francis had already come out and, and there was, there was no reason there, there was nothing that could have been gained from, from making that recording. I mean, also is she supposed to be in love with Elena? If she was truly in love with her and wanted what was best for her, she just would have walked away, Hmm. but it just seemed to be, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I get on a ramble. Yeah, that's okay. Well, Feliciana was mad. Francis was still lying. So she was like, uh, enough of the lying shit. I can see that. That was more, see, it was more of a, I think what Rev's saying is more of a, the interaction is more between Anna and Elena. You know, even though all parties concerned understand that the reason Francis lied was probably to protect Elena, if that makes sense. And and honestly, Feliciana just seems really immature in her actions. Anyway, just from right from the you know, Elena telling her repeatedly, you know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, and her just continuing to say, okay, but you won't even try. Well, no, of course she's not going to try. She's not in love with you. She doesn't. She doesn't feel. That, that sexual spark, she doesn't feel that that romantic connection, but Feliciana just could not get that through her head. So maybe maybe it's just a, a testament to her her emotional immaturity all the way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's part of it, right? But the other part is that she didn't know that Francis was lying for Elana. So there, there was a lot of things that she didn't know. Yeah, I, I guess for me it just would have been, you know, her main. If she really loved Elena, she should have, she should have just let it go. But even, even that was, and and that was stated in the book too. You know, she she debates back and forth. Like, should I just let this go, or should I do something else? So, yeah. Yeah, I guess in the end she really didn't love Elena. Oh, or her yeah, ang- yeah. her anger won out. I mean, I think the people that you love are the people you hurt the most. That's true. Just hopefully not in such a public, humiliating, horrible way. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. I was just gonna say with friends like that. No. Oh, and I and I got I'll, I'll, my little nauseating aside here. I I gotta tell you, I got so sick of the scene reading the word prostitute. I about wanted to strangle myself. Yeah, Francis seemed to have an issue with with even with every, yeah that that really came up a lot. Was there a reason for that? You mean the word prostitute? Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, it's either prostitute, call girl, or whore. Hooker. And I don't like whore. Hooker. You forgot hooker. No, Hooker was in there a few times. No, no, she's she's relaying no. different words. Yeah. Okay, you think call girl, 
you kind of think fancy. Right. You might think prostitute too, but you're not going to think hooker. I so think it, I think, I think for, for me it was more the, um, and maybe for you too, Andy, just the refusal to use a name. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh, you mean from Francis' point of view? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, what was she supposed to call her? Person well, A? I'm, well, no. I, mean, <laughs> I think she would, you know, maybe ask for a name a little earlier or or when she had, but even once she had a name, you know, oh. she's, she's going to call her Jan or, well, she, or even. She did ask for a name earlier and Elena didn't want to give it to her. Right. But when, even after even after Elena gave her her name, she still wouldn't use it, uh, and and that was another. Th- I mean, that that seemed to be kind of a. I don't know if, if it would be necessarily considered a theme, but it, the same with um, once once uh, Marissa came back. But then there were you know the, the the names just seemed to be a theme throughout the throughout the story. Um, so I don't think it was I don't think it was really distracting necessarily, um, but there seemed to be. A, like maybe some under uh, uh, some underlying reason for Francis with the names, and if it wasn't intentional, it wasn't intentional. But it, but it kind of felt like that. Well, first of all, well, first of all, like you said, she gave uh, Lena first gave her name as Jan, mm-hmm. and Francis knew that wasn't right. And then Alana said, "Well, my name is Alana," and. Francis was still not sure if that was right. She's not going to call her Alana either, if that's not her real name. But why was it important to have her real name? Well, because I think it was. Uh, I want to. I want to feel that one. Go ahead. <laughs> um, for right from the beginning, Francis was very concerned with truth and with 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 Elena lying to her. You know, if you remember with the uh, with the whole when they were talking about Francis giving her an orgasm, and she said right out, "I don't want you to lie to me. I don't want you to fake it. If you're going to fake it, then we'll just do something else." You know, even though she she knew that this was a uh, you know a, a, a you know she was paying for for this attention and the affection. Uh, she still wanted to maintain some level of honesty within that. Did, mm. did I, did I, is that what you intended or am I just going off? Yeah, you, you got it. So Yay. That, <laughs> Yay. So that's, why, that's why she kept thinking of Alana as the prostitute. She yeah. did. I love it when I'm and, right. And, Fra- and Francis didn't know that Alana was her real name. Right, right. Um, I don't know that I have anything else. You got anything else? Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed how um, you got a little glimpse of, of Marissa at her little 14-year-old best with the, um, with the green hair and the little outing. I got, but I got a big kick out of that one. It was a nice little touch, you know what I mean? little rebellious 14-year-old with green hair. I got a big kick out of that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's just it's kind of like the little things that make the characters stand out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I have a question. Um, I, I wanted to know when um, when Francis is first going to the Howard Johnson, and she's having her. Um, I think it's before she has her conversation with the Coke machine. Um, <laughs> Which which really did help right away to um, to to let us know that that Francis is a, is a real person. Um, you did a lot, of, and I did. This isn't what I was what I was wanting to talk about, but now that I'm thinking about it, you, you did a lot of. You really worked a lot on at least it appeared to me to make Francis um, an accessible real person. We didn't actually get a lot of a lot of Francis in her in her gay as a choice um, persona, and I think that that really helped helped us to be able to to not see her in that in that caricature of of an ex gay uh, advocate. Um, uh, and and you know that scene where Feliciana. Feliciana goes to gay as a choice. Yeah. And I had, 
Yeah, I was really not sure if I wanted to keep that or get rid of it because that showed Francis as the bad guy. But even then, she didn't come across as the bad guy. I think it, you know, it showed by then we knew what Francis's plan was, and and it showed. I for me, it showed Francis as being um, kind of calm and caring and trying to, um, you know, giving us a, a little bit of an insight into what one of those meetings might have been. And as soon as Feliciana started to become disruptive and and um, accusatory, belligerent, then she kind of she went into her more professional mode and shuffled her out. But but she was never rude or mean or or disrespectful, even when Feliciana was in her face. And I just have to say, I really don't don't like Feliciana at all. I just don't. Um, so to have Francis be the better person just raised her up in in my in my uh, opinion right away. Yeah, and and I know that a lot of people have a hard time liking Francis. Oh, okay. And part of Feliciana's character was to be a worse person than Francis. Yeah, and she was. And, and yeah, that was definitely on purpose. Okay, good, because I'm telling you, I, I'd, I'd go smash all her shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, oh. well, she, she was very fun to write. The bad people always are. I, yeah. Um, oh, and I liked I liked Darren how he liked to get fucked in the ass. I just want to say that. Um, yeah, go Darren. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Me too. Uh, okay, now, now I, I don't think Darren was a bad guy at all. <laughs> no, was, I don't either. He was getting paid to do a job. Oh. Man, that's the truth. And he he was the only person who was honest with Alana. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I agree. Well, and Francis was honest. And Kevin wasn't honest. No, I didn't like him either. wasn't. Kevin was a loser. Yeah, yeah. Loser ass. And Darren it was the one that ended up being the honest one. Yeah, that's yeah. Funny. Well, yeah, know. I like Darren. And then, you know, prostitutes and, you know, hojo meetings and getting up the ass. There wasn't a lot of graphic sex in this novel. There was. And I just want to say, I okay, I, I just want to say... I I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to give any of it away. I don't want to give any of it away. <laughs> I love the final scene. Love it. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Fantastic. Well, why? Why? <laughs> I don't want to give that away to the listeners. <laughs> no, give it away. We're spoiling the shit out of it. Go ahead. Uh, I I just love that they that they that they went back to Howard Johnson and got nasty in a chair with a big dildo. Yay. I loved it. Yeah, the full circle. Uh, yeah, I, and that was a, that was great. I loved I loved the way that you ended it. Um, so here was my question. Damn it. Before, before we got all off into everything else, is um, there was a uh, there were some initials that were carved into something or written on something really small. H J K plus D R S for a equals forever. Are those people you know? No, <laughs> they're, they're, they're just letters. <laughs> I always like to know that kind of stuff if there if there's some meaning to to any of that. But thanks for shattering my illusion. Yeah, well, that's why I asked about the hourglass. <laughs> well, a lot of places I go to, you know, I see things like that, you know, written on the wall. And uh, like I said before, it's the little things that stand out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like to notice the little things. Um, I did want to ask, do you use an editor or do you do all this yourself? Okay, I sent Strange Bedfellows to a publisher, and it was rejected because the publisher's committee, they didn't buy buy Francis' motivation for searching out a prostitute. She was accomplished. She was powerful. Why get a prostitute? Well, my reaction to that was, well, people do that every day. I mean, look at governors, senators, all that. So I was wondering, gosh, am I missing something? But 
I started asking people and they said, no, that makes sense. So anyway, I found another publisher. <laughs> I found another <laughs> publisher who loved it. I like the little kitty in the background. Yeah. That was excellent. Okay, so I sent it to another publisher, and they said that they loved it, and it just needs a light copy edit. And I was kind of like, what? Really? Isn't, is it really that good? So I was kind of like, uh, I don't know about that. So that gave me a little bit, you know, nervousness about signing with that publisher. So anyway... I decided not to. And there was other reasons too, but but my point is there's that you know reviewers have told me that I have a good editorial team, good support, and all that. But no, I didn't. It was really just me, and it was me and the readers. Yeah. Well, I think the um, I, I could totally see why she would have hired a prostitute. My my, I had made a note the first time I read it. Um, the thing that I didn't get is why she would want Elena to go with her when she came out to her family. That that seemed awkward and odd to me. Um, I can I can see where she would want somebody. You know, she explained it. You know, I, I just want somebody to be there uh, for some support. But to me, that that seemed like it would have been um, more awkward to have a woman there instead of say somebody like Randy Germain, who was you know who was supportive. But then again, I know that she didn't know that, and she didn't think anybody would be supportive. So it's kind of a circular thing. I understand that, but that was the only question. That, that that was the only thing that kind of that that for me was like uh, I don't know hiring a prostitute for sex and you know getting ready to come out and running her speech past her and and you know getting ready for you know what she considered her real lover um, I totally got all that there were some there were some um, grammatical things that stood out to me okay well well here's the thing. <laughs> Frances was afraid that she was going to chicken out and not say anything. So the point of having another person there was to force her to come out to her family. I, I can see that. I can see that. But it's, it still seems like having, like, I, this, is, this is how I did it. You know, I thought in my head, okay, if, if, if I was Frances, I would feel more self-conscious and guilty having a woman that I was actually sleeping with sitting next to me while I was trying to come out to my family. But that was just, you know, that's just me and Francis isn't me. So, I mean, I can, I, I, I can, I can see it just again, you know, for me, it was like, Oh, I don't think I could have done that. Yeah. Well, that doesn't bother me really. What, what would bother me more is that, what would bother me more is if my parents knew what happened to me at camp and they were there and I was sitting with them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Frances was just so desperate to make a connection. And if she didn't feel good enough, a connection with Alana, then she could have told Alana, no, don't come with me. Mm-hmm. And you could you could you could sense uh, Francis's desperation when she addressed that with Alana with, with Elena the, the very first time. You know, I, I want you to you know when when Elena says, well, you know, what do you want from me? And she she lays it out for her. This is what I'm going to do. I'd like you to come with me for this. Um, and and uh, you know, Elena's like, okay, but that's that's yeah i can do that for you but then there were you know she was concerned about the you know the being outed publicly as a as a prostitute now all of that so no i i can i can you you can absolutely sense francis's um fear of of not following through her knowing that that this is something she should have done a long time ago and having her nephew's death you know just really spring that on which i thought was a really nice touch as far as um, you know, to show to to show the reader 
why this moment in time is is the one where five years ago when she started wanting to do this uh, was not. Uh, it was three years. Was it three? I thought I thought I had read somewhere where she had started thinking about it five years um, previous. I think it was three years that that. Um, oh well, well she saw the other prostitute three years ago. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, the white trash with the orange tan. The, the Jupiter, the, <laughs> the Jupiter tan, I believe, uh, Victoria. Yeah, lawyer law trash. Right, <laughs> right. What kind of lawyer is she gonna be? That was awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, here, here's here's the bottom line. I really enjoyed this book, um, and I wasn't sure what to expect at all. I really did. It, 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 I had I had a few um, preconceived notions about what I thought it was going to be, and within the first few pages, those were blown out of the water. And from that moment, you know, from those moments forward, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and I I really enjoyed it, and uh, I, and I'm I'm happy to recommend it to other folks. Yep, I uh, yeah, second that. Oh, thank you. And I want to say. <laughs> I've kind of gotten that vibe <laughs> about, about my other book, Waiting. So, so I want to tell people, read it. Yeah. <laughs> Buy the damn book, <laughs> people. Let blurbs carry you away. That's right. That, that is true. There are many times blurbs just suck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one thing I did want to say is... Um, the word pussy was used throughout this book, and, and it took me a while to get used to it. Oh, right. You giggled every time you saw it. You know, you would think that, but but since there really was, there, I mean, there's not a lot of levity in this in this book at all. It's very serious and and um, and at times kind of gut wrenching. Yeah, at yeah. least it was for me. So it was difficult for me to even you know to to giggle at any of it. it but it, you know, it, it, it took me a while to, um, to, to look past that. And again, that, that is such a bizarre, odd quirk that is just mine that, um, but I did want to, I did want to bring it up that, you know, that, you know, pussy is used a lot and, um, and I became kind of desensitized to it until right before we recorded and, um, and, uh, Kelly used pussy and made me almost spit out my bratwurst. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, Kelly rocks. <laughs> mm. So, um, Kelly, did you have anything else that you wanted to say? Otherwise, I want to talk about the giveaway a little bit. Um, I just want to say that I like pussy. <laughs> <laughs> She's good people. <laughs> Excellent. Me too. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty. Right? I have no <laughs> point of reference for this conversation. None. No, 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 have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, well, Kelly has graciously agreed uh, to a giveaway. And since uh, Andy and I don't like giving away things for nothing, <laughs> um, we're going to make you answer a question. <laughs> Okay, because I like to see people twist in the wind and feel uncomfortable. And, and, you know, <laughs> Much like we do go. on this show from time to time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you gotta work for it, people. Work for it. You here's gotta the work. question. <laughs> you knew it was going up. What? I was oh, gonna sing God. a song. Never mind. Didn't didn't that one already? Is that have we not? Have you not burst into song over that one yet? No, well, I was going to, but you you know pretty much put the kibosh on that. Go ahead. I I ruined the moment. Damn it. God, I feel guilty now. I... Nah, nah, it's all right. You have a headache. Okay, so what? Um, <laughs> she really does people okay. I do yeah so all right so tell um let's let's get on with the excitement at hand all right then so here's the question that we've come up with um that you need to answer what gift did Francis give to Elena that's pretty easy right pretty yep. easy so anybody who's read strange bedfellows will know this right off yep. um and you have uh, two weeks to uh, to get that to get that in. So we need to have your answers sent in to cocktail hour 
dot show at gmail.com no later than midnight on Friday, October 28th. Yay. All right. And the 29th. Oh, wait, hold on. No, we're not going to go there yet. So you have to, um, you have to send in your answer by the 28th of October. And so if, if you haven't read strange bedfellows, well, first of all, you shouldn't be listening to this show because you know, there's spoilers everywhere. And what the hell is really wrong with you people? (laughs) So (laughs) you have, you have until the 28th to get the book, read the book. Um, and I have to say that, um, the book only costs five bucks. So that's um, a damn bargain. Was, five bucks. Huh? You kidding? That's a bargain at five bucks. Damn it, it people! It, it's a bargain at ten bucks. I so. know. Get that credit card out. Go buy a book. Go buy a damn book. Go buy the damn book. What is wrong with you people? Go <laughs> buy the damn book. Go. Get busy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so go buy the damn book. Answer the freaking question. Um, what gift did, did Francis give to Elena? We will have it. Uh, I'll have the, the question on the show notes. Only emailed responses will be accepted. Don't post it on the website or in the Goodreads group or on the forum or any place else you may find us because I will delete it um, immediately. If, uh, if you submit the right answer and I pick your name, and if we get enough, I'll do the I'll do the number generator again. I know you I know you guys love the number generator, mm-hmm. so um, we'll do the number generator. We'll do a live drawing on the next show, uh, and you can choose between one of three books: Strange Bedfellows, The Odd Couple, which uh, is it, it, it's the second edition, just re released, and the brand spanking new one, Waiting. Yay! Uh, so you get to pick any one of those. And um, there you go. Okay, so you have until midnight the 28th to get your answers in. And um, I'll I'll pick the winner. Very nice. Excellent. Um, And they're on on print and ebook. So you can pick which. Okay, because that was that that's a big thing. You know, they may want to get strange. Like if it was me, I'd want a print copy of Strange Bedfellows signed. Mm -hmm. So, So that's cool with you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Excellent. So I, I'm going to enter. and um... <laughs> <laughs> You are so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if they're well, going um, to P-Town, I could get their signatures next week. What? I said well, they're going I, to P-Town. I'm going to enter. I might win. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Are you are you going to P-Town? No. Yeah, me okay. either. I very poor. <laughs> and it doesn't stand for poor town, does it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going either. But, so. but I did go there for my wedding trip. Oh, that's nice. You had a wedding trip? <laughs> well, it was not really a honeymoon. <laughs> See, we live in Virginia. We did, went to Massachusetts to get legally married. Mm-hmm. So it was a wedding trip. Oh, I got gotcha. you. We went to Toronto overnight, and that was it. We flew into Toronto on a Friday, got married that, that afternoon right before the courthouse uh, or this, before City Hall closed, went uh, back to the hotel, had dinner, celebrated at the hotel, and then came home the next day. That was our wedding trip. Was it a hojo? <laughs> so it was a really, really super nice hotel in downtown uh, Toronto, and it was right near the, uh, the the gay area of town. So we had a wonderful dinner uh, at a gay-owned restaurant and went across the street to a lesbian bar and then went back to the hotel and had loads and loads of fun. For, for a while and then went home the next day <laughs> and it was it was fine it was a our kid was a year old so um it was it was tough that was the first time we were away from him overnight but we had a great time so Ooh. congratulations on your wedding yeah yay oh well thank you it was two years ago <laughs> but better late than never there you go there you go somehow hopefully i don't it'll seems... be, hopefully it'll be legal where you are soon yeah no kidding well, you get rid of Governor McAssington, but... 
Yeah, that would be nice. Now, before we we start wrapping this up, uh, a few episodes ago, before Redman and before Beth Wild, it was on our anniversary show, Andy came up with a fantastic idea for a new new segment at the end of our show Mm -hmm. called Who Would You You Date? date. (laughs) Okay, so um, for this, for for tonight's episode, we're going to, and it could be anybody, anybody in uh, in the book Strange Bedfellows. Andy, you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking Brenda, you know. Damn it, you stole my fucking line. (laughs) Damn you. (laughs) You know I have a thing for the moms. I knew, I knew it. I knew it. Well, since Jenny's mom wasn't in the book. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, why Brenda? Uh, I'm, actually, I'm kidding. It's one of those uh, rolling jokes that we have on Facebook. Uh <laughs> Rev See, likes here's to... the thing. I have a. Th- I always say that I'm having an affair with so and so's mom. It's our friend Ginny's mom. Before that, it was our friend Iman's mom. I'm always. I'm the mom fucker. That's what I do. <laughs> the milf. <laughs> she she looks for the milf. <laughs> always, but especially when the milf is like seventy to eighty years old, it's awesome. It really creeps people out and it makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but in all seriousness, though. No. I would have, I, I'd pick, I'd pick the, uh, prostitute number two, <laughs> Alana, not prostitute number one, I want one behind box number two, <laughs> I'm getting bad, nice. uh, yeah, nice. well, you know, I mean, she's, she's, uh, she's all right, I like her, she's, um, clearly she's very empathetic, uh, she's a rollicking good time. And uh, I don't think she gives her heart away easily, but when she does, she seems to be like a loyal, uh, a loyal character. So I like Al- Alana all the way around. Well, that's who I was going to pick after I picked Brenda. But <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. And she also has a briefcase full of toys, which you know is never a bad thing. Yeah, right. You know what's not to like? Seriously. Exactly. I and mean, she's exactly. not afraid to use them. Oh, you can still pick her. It's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm sure she'll share. <laughs> and she has often done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I pick her. So there you go. That's it. Yay. I, I feel a little bad for Frances now. I almost want to pick her just because, but I don't really, that blondes have never been my thing. And I actually like blondes. Yeah. I don't know. I think Frances could be hot. I, I pictured Francis as being pretty hot, but yeah, I just, uh, Elena seemed to be, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fantasizing as a, excuse me, I went away for a minute. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I came back, I came back. You know, maybe in the, maybe in the sequel, I'll feel better about Francis, but I was getting there until then the damn story ended, like, God damn it, it ended already? Oh, man. Here, here's something that that. Um, so, so you all still don't like Francis? No, 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 no. no, no, no. She's okay. I, I, I like Francis. Okay, I don't. I don't want to go to bed with her. Uh-uh, I don't. I don't know. That, I don't know. Maybe I don't trust her enough yet. Yeah, yeah. We just need a sequel. Hello, hint, hint, hint. Are, are we are we big on sequels or is it, or can we see? Are we? Are, will there be any uh, any further Francis and Elena stories? Well, I discussed it. With one reader, a possible sequel, but not with the focus on Francis and Ilana. Mm. Mm. Oh, God, it's not Feliciana, is it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to punch her in the face, too. Right? Hey, hey yay! Take Go that, buy bitch. two of these books, then. Every, all our readers. Go buy two. <laughs> but the thing two. is, I like to write romance. And a sequel between Francis and Alana, I mean, you know, they're, they're already together. They already have the romance. So, you know, what do you do? Mm-hmm. All right, then. Well, um, I, I did want to say that I was uh, I was kind of chatting with a well, friend of okay, mine. Okay, well, what would you like to see in the sequel? Uh, 
Fran know. France is letting her damn bun down. Hello. She did let her bun no, down. No, no, you know what I mean. Like, you know, all of a sudden <laughs> now she's like, you know, here, kitty, kitty, meow. Like you know, like she's all crazy now. You know, she's laying her hair down. You want to see Francis in a in a in a lesbian bar? Yeah, like she's dancing gone. on the stage. Francis gone wild. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> maybe a short story. Oh yeah, maybe a little short story, a little novella. You know, something where Francis is like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm a big ass dyke. Kiss my ass, people. And she goes out. You know. A yeah, a short story might be possible. There you go. Yeah, I could see myself doing that easy. There you go. Well, I tell you what, you do a short story and 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 we will publicize the hell out of it. There you go. With okay. with our six yeah. other our six other reader or listeners. <laughs> readers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Francis and Elena can do a reprise in next year's um, cocktail hour writing challenge. Oh, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you have a you have a week that if you can write if you can write a short story of ten thousand words in a week that'd be awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't worry about your other obligations. No, it's all, about, <laughs> it's all about the bearded clam. Oh, leave me for you. <laughs> no, that's still every time I hear that <laughs> phrase, my ass puckers. Like I said, if if I'm not overwhelmed, I will enter. Excellent. Well, you got a week. <laughs> yeah, midnight of the 15th. Midnight Central Standard Time, actually. I, I'm just going to let it go. It, it, if it's in my inbox when I wake up on the 16th, <laughs> it's good. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming on our show. And thank you for writing such a fun, well, not fun, it wasn't fun, but interesting and entertaining story, because there wasn't much levity in that story. But it was oh, very... That's what I wanted to say. And, and fun, come on. Mm, no, it wasn't no, fun. No, not really, no. No, I didn't, no, it wasn't I, very fun. No. Uh, I was joking. Ah, oh, ah. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, sometimes the dry doesn't come through, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I need some lube for that. Oh, so, no, no, no. A dry sense of humor. Oh, Lordy. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So you went no, on the lube what thing. I was, what I was going to say is that earlier I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who had said that she read the um, the blurb for uh, for The Odd Couple. And, and I think she, she saw something about the waiting or waiting also and had mentioned that you write, you write very, uh, I think, I think her words were, were something to the effect of you don't take the easy way to romance and that, uh, and she had mentioned the word gray in, in hers in uh, in her, damn it. I wish I could uh, pull that back up again. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay. So I was talking to, uh, to, uh, it's actually a, a woman that Andy introduced me to, uh, uh, Megan and uh, we were chatting earlier and she asked me uh, did you read her other books or just strange bedfellows or as Andy likes to call it strangle bedfellows oh, please. Um, and uh, she says looking at the summaries of the other books she doesn't take the easy route to romance she really does like the shades of gray and questioning what may be taboo what, what do you what do you have to say to that well, to me, they're not taboo. I am very open-minded, <laughs> and I had no problem connecting with Francis. <laughs> and I'm really surprised that other people did. Okay, to me, it's not the hard road. <laughs> I write what I feel. You know, I need to express. I need to write. Okay. I don't think I could write, you know, a fluff. <laughs> now, my short stories, yeah. They're more fluff. But my romance, no. Where can we find your short stories? Well, I have a collection coming out. Actually, two. One is lesbian-themed, and the other one is general fiction. Not not meaning straight, just just sexuality doesn't have a role in them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, hmm. I've had... Now, I've had two short stories published on Bedazzled, Bedazzled Ink magazine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, there's more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, yeah, those will probably be coming out in the next couple months. Okay. Well, um, be sure and let us know, and we'll uh, 
will help get you help get the word out. Um, okay. Well, did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about before we before we uh, wrap this up? No, I guess not. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for writing this uh, this very good book. Um, so. Uh, just to just to recap, um, I finished my second drink and I'm starting to feel the buzz. So Yay. I just want to make sure everybody understood that and knew <laughs> what was going on there. Um, the Ruby Relaxer has uh, has relaxed me, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, okay. So um, everybody, remember that we have a book giveaway going on right now. You can get uh, one of one of uh, th- one of the three books that uh that q kelly has out strange bedfellows the odd couple or waiting and you just need to answer the question what gift did francis give to elena and email that to cocktailhour.show at gmail.com before midnight on the 28th um and we have another guest going to join us on the show that we'll be recording on the 29th our halloween show and it's going to be a show full of andy's i don't even know if i'm going to show up (laughs) you better all right then yeah um andy marquette is going to be joining us and we are going to we're going to we're going to start off with uh, a few of the stories in the skull and crossbones uh, anthology right yep And then we're just going to go. Yep. We're we're going to see where it takes us. Yep. It's our Halloween special. So, yeah, we're going to be talking uh, anything Halloween spooky. Hopefully, um, Andy will uh, grace us with her uh, whole zombie obsession thing she's got going on. And we may. That's what I'm in. I'm interested in hearing about the zombies. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we may even, you know, move off into talking about scary films and other scary things books or who knows scary drinking yeah. scary lays in the past i don't know we'll, we'll be who knows so Ooh, stay I've tuned. Had a few of those <laughs> scary oh. stalking bitches <laughs> <laughs> i mean i was the stalker oh no, no. maybe i'm gonna have the wife join us for this one and she can talk about her scary experiences with the stalker well there you <laughs> go maybe why not bring her on no. bring her on we don't have a drink picked out, so if you've got a, a good scary drink suggestion, uh, be sure and let us know. And um, you can, shit, man, we are everywhere now. Um, you can give us a call at 414-367-8421. You can send us an email at cocktailhour.show at gmail.com. You can leave a comment on our website or our forum. Um or you can just, you know, call Andy because she's everywhere. Well, I'm easy. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so, um, let's see. I think the only – well, let's we, let's see. We do have a couple of things coming up. So we've got Andy Marquette on the 29th, going to record with us on the 29th. That show will be posted probably the 30th. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. After that – we have Susan Maher going to be joining us on November 12th, I believe. Yep. And um, we don't have anybody lined up after that, but Andy's going to P-Town, um, which is why we're recording this show a week early. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy's going to P-Town, and who knows what she'll be able to arrange oh, right. there. Because you know I'll, I'm going to be trying to get all up into Ollie Wally's business. Oh, I just want the autograph. Well, did you send me the cocktail hour shirt? No. I'm not sending you a cocktail hour shirt. I just want something that will go in my scrapbook. No, your cocktail hour shirt. Are you going to have her sign your cocktail? Are you taking your cocktail hour shirt? I might. But there's no room on the front anymore. Well, I'll figure out a way to squeeze it in there. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to send you my shirt because what if something happened to it? Then I would be shirtless. And nobody wants to see that. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll figure out something else. I, I have, just remember, I just want things like if you can get people to sign postcards or bookmarks or things like that, something that I can put in my scrapbook. You think like that's, my, what am I going to pull that out of my ass cheeks? Come on now. No, they'll have promotional uh, materials. Uh, yeah, okay. <sighs> this is big time shit here, people. Okay. 
<laughs> and and Rad's going to be there. Yep. And Andy's staying at the bed and breakfast where all this stuff is going to be happening. I so. knew I would pick accidentally pick to happen in place. <laughs> Maybe it's just happening because you were there. Oh yeah, that, that's oh, that's more like it. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Well, um, so well, thank you to Kelly. Yep. And 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 Melanie, thank yep. you also. Yeah. Um, and um, well, shit. I I don't. I think I'm done. Are you done? I'm done. I'm done. Thank you, uh, everybody. All right. Um, so send in your your entries, and um, we'll talk to you in a few weeks. Yay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That was excellent. <laughs>